Hello. So if you missed the first Zoom meeting that we've had in uh, El Bromo Overton Elementary, then don't worry, this is supposed to be a makeup and it's supposed to show you some of the things that you might have missed uh, in our first meeting. Uh, one of the more important things is we showed you how to use the Zoom room. Now here you can see uh, this is my little Zoom screen. And the two important things that I want you to look at are right here, start video and unmute. Every time you come into the room, you should be muted but your video should be on. I always want to make sure that I can see you. I want to see what you're doing. I want to make sure that you're someplace safe. And I want to make sure that you're participating. Now, if you have something that you need to say, or if I ask for responses, then yes, you can unmute yourself. That's fine. But when I'm speaking or when I'm presenting, I want you to please keep this muted at all times. Now, for the restroom, do you need to ask permission to go to the restroom? No, you're in your own house. If you need to use a restroom, go ahead and go. But before you go, please make sure that you turn your video off. Make sure your video is off, make sure your mute is off. Go to the restroom and then when you come back, you can put your video back on. That's how I know you went to the restroom. Again, you don't need to ask, I just need to know what happened to you. So I'll assume that you went there. Another thing that's important is how to rename yourself. So most of the kids that come into my Zoom room will have some kind of weird code for their names like MT56328 or something like that. To rename yourself, come down here to where it says participants and click on it. Now you'll see that I'm the only one in the room. But if there were more people, there would be a whole bunch of names and you have to look for yourself. When you look for yourself, highlight it and come over here to more and you'll see rename. After you rename, you can change your name to whatever you want. I think I'll put Mr. De La Garza. You'll see that my name has actually changed down there at the bottom. And that's exactly what I wanted it to do. So that's the basics of how to get into the Zoom room right here. Now, the next thing I wanted to go ahead and show you, um, whoops, the next thing I wanted to show you after we finish with Zoom is uh, the next assignment that we're going to do, or the first assignment we had. We were basically going to draw a picture of an emotion. Now, I wanted everyone to introduce themselves, to say, hello, my name is Nancy, hello, my name is Desiree, hello, my name is Bob and then tell me an emotion that you're feeling. I feel good, I feel excited, I feel happy, I feel sad. After that, I was gonna ask you to draw your feelings. Now, how does that work? Well, I have this little present, presentation show uh, devised. This is just the first page that has the Zoom rules. Most important thing I want you to know is just when we're ready for class, I want you ready for class. And now we're gonna go to the presentation. Whoops, let's see, how about right here? This right here is a picture of some kids, and you can tell that these kids are all happy or excited or elated. Those are the feelings that I get from here. So if you wanted to draw a picture of some kids or people, that's fine. In the next slide, we can see a place. This place is very quiet, very peaceful. I can see things moving around. It's very relaxing. There's no people, no cities, no anything. And so if you wanted to, you could also draw a place or a background. Over here, we see just an emoji, and everyone can tell this is sad, but the reason this is here is because you can draw an emoji, you can draw a cartoon, you can draw a symbol. Anything that means your emotion is fine. Over here, we see an abstract painting by Jackson Pollock. This looks all wild and crazy. Some of the kids said it made them feel nervous, it made them feel very scared, it made them feel very dark. If, those are, if that works for you, that's fine. You can certainly do a drawing where you're scribbling or getting angry. As long as the picture makes sense to you, it's okay. A lot of kids liked this drawing. They thought it was very pretty. And they said that this girl looked very sad or she looked very happy. She looked very alone or that she was waiting for somebody. Uh, there were a lot of emotions here. Like I said, it doesn't matter what somebody else sees in here as long as it makes sense to you. If you wanna do something like this and you think of it as somebody who's very sad, that's fine. If you want to do something that is very happy, that's fine too. This is an abstract painting by Wassily Kandinsky, and this is supposed to be a picture of a bird. Now it's hard to see, but I want you to know that your drawing does not have to be perfect. If you try to draw something and it comes off a little bit strange or weird looking, that's fine. Again, as long as it makes sense to you, you're perfectly okay. And the last drawing I have here is by Keith Haring, all these people dancing. But why are they dancing? Are they happy? Are they excited? Are they having fun? Those are the things that I want you to think about when you complete this, okay? So there goes that. So now I'm gonna ask you to take a piece of paper and some crayons, a marker, you can use anything that you want to, and you're gonna create your own drawing. First, pick an emotion 
and then start drawing whatever you'd like. Now, some of the examples that I showed today, because I was doing drawings all day with every single class, are right here, just a regular old piece of paper. This one right here shows somebody that is upset. Over here, this is sleepy. I don't even have a person in here. Over here, I've got crazy and wild. Here I have somebody who's nervous, excited, bored, very angry, tired, funny, and then of course just a general happy. So you can pick anything you'd like. And after you finish your drawing, since you can't show it to me right now, please show it to a parent, please show it to a friend, show it to somebody and explain what your emotion is. I know, we're still not done yet, right? So the last thing I have to show you is how to do assignment number one. On Friday, you're not gonna have a Zoom meeting. On Friday, you're gonna be going to your homepage. Now this is fifth grade, but it doesn't matter which grade you're in. Whatever it is, you're gonna scroll down here, down, 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 not synchronous, we already did these Zoom, assignments, you're going to come down here to the asynchronous learning, September 11th, lesson one. You're going to click on lesson number one, and then you're going to see that there's a survey here that you can answer. You don't have to answer this unless you want to. It's just asking you what you like to draw and what you want to learn. But down here at the bottom, it is important that you click on lesson number one. This is going to be your assignment for Friday. Clicking on that, there are instructions in English and Spanish. And down here, there's an example of what you're supposed to do. You're going to make a video of yourself in your art area at home, and you're going to show me all your art materials. This you do have to record on an iPhone, on a laptop, on a camera. You have to up, you have to record it, and after that, you're going to upload it to Blend. If you don't know how to do that, this video should show you how to upload to Blend. So this assignment needs to be done on Friday, and you're going to be turning it in as soon as possible. When you're finished, You'll hit next page and this lets you know you're done, 100% done, and then you're ready for next week.